you guys, it's Karen and I have had quite a few bladder installations now so I thought I would come and talk to you about them. Well, not that many, I've had three, but that's kind of halfway through the six weeks where you have it once a week um, and the idea is you have it for six weeks and then you assess if it's helping you or not um, but I thought I would just tell you about the experience and what's happened with me um, and what I'm finding so far and it might um, it might help some people because I know that last the one I did about Eurodynamics I've had quite a few lovely messages from people saying that it was really good to find a video explaining the whole thing and I didn't find there to be many videos on bladder installations so um, a kind of overview for you is that I have painful bladder syndrome or interstitial cystitis. I have had it now for 14 years, so many, many years, but it has been much better for between five and eight years. It's been easily manageable with amitriptyline um, and with the fact that I, I am at home um, or working from home because I can go to the loo frequently so my my problem is i need to go for a week constantly like probably two or three times an hour um, if i don't it's very very painful for me it feels like i've got acid in my bladder i do drink a lot i drink constantly throughout the, d the day but if i didn't do that i get the cystitis like pain so i manage it by drinking a lot and by going to the loo a lot which is fine when i'm at home when it becomes a problem is if i take watson out for a walk for an hour and there's not somewhere that I can use the bathroom it is agony for me it's not just like your normal needing to go to the bathroom it's agony um so that's why they did these bladder installations they found out that i've had the wrong diagnosis for all these years it wasn't an overactive bladder because i don't have any leakage i don't have any problems you know holding it um and so they've changed it from overactive bladder to painful bladder syndrome <coughs> um and suggested these bladder installations so the first time i went I was super nervous because I've had the Eurodynamic study which involves a catheter um, tube going up and it, they pull it out and reinsert it about four or five times to test pressure. Um, I've also had two cystoscopies and all three of those um, procedures were agony for me, really bad pain afterwards. Like it took me probably 20 minutes to get out to the car after my Eurodynamic study and thankfully Kev had persuaded me not to drive, that he would pick me up because the couple of times before he'd had to come and pick me up and then we'd have to go and get my car later on because I'd driven down and couldn't drive home. So he picked me up. I could barely walk. I was in so much pain and I was in pain for the rest of the day in, in severe pain and then it kind of dissipated over the next couple of days. And I had to kind of lie on my front. I couldn't even sit down properly. I was sitting like on one bum cheek in the car and I had a hot water bottle on my tummy. So I was really apprehensive about doing the bladder installations because you know, I was like doing this once a week for six weeks is basically going to wipe out my weekends because it's a Friday morning they do it. Um, and I thought, you know, that's me going to be in pain at the weekends and I need to walk Watson when Kev's playing golf. I don't really want to ask Kev to give up his golf for six weeks, you know, because it was the end of the competition year and he wanted to improve his handicap, etc. But I thought, my mum actually said to me, just have one and see how you get on, you know, and if, you, if it does hurt too much, you don't have to have the second one. So I went in and actually I got not the regular nurse um, and she was quite nervous, especially when I told her it was my first time. She, all, she actually wasn't supposed to deal with people who were going for the first time, but it was on my record that I'd been before because they had made an appointment, but I didn't, I turned up and was like, no, I didn't know that I was going in for bladder installations on that day. I was fuming. I turned up and was like, I've got an appointment. I have no idea what it's for. It didn't say in the letter. And they were like, oh, you're here for a bladder installation. I was like, I don't think so. I was like, I've got stuff to do. I've driven here. I haven't got anybody to pick me up, you know, in case of it being painful. Um, I found out why they do that now. It's because of private, um, because of confidentiality. So if anybody opened my letter, it wouldn't say on it that I was having bladder installation. So I kind of understand it. Anyway, so I went for this first one and she eventually did, did agree to do it because she was just like, so you consent to this and I'll try to be gentle because I was saying to her, I do consent, I absolutely do. I'm just really nervous in case it's as painful as everything else. But thankfully, you know, my husband took time off work and he was waiting for me. He was with me, um, not with me in the room. He was in the waiting room. <laughs> I don't need that. Um, and she did it and I, she, you, you just sort of lie on the bed Obviously you take your clothes off and then you just put something over your um, middle bit. She comes in, explains what she's gonna do. She inserts the catheter to drain out any um, 
water that's still in there which for me there's always about 50 mil even though I go to the loo and then come into the room there's still always about 50 mil in there it's just that, that last little bit that I can never get out of my bladder and and hurts me you know so she, they drain that out and then they use the same catheter they just put a long tube on in fact I can show you everything because I'm now doing it at home so let me get it all I'll show you the catheter I'll open one so you can see it so this is the packet they come in which looks a bit scary you're like bloody hell that's long um, so they open this what I didn't realize because I'd had these before actually my mum sent me them to try out um, is that there's a little sticker on the back and what you do is you peel that sticker off and you can stick that nearby you so for me I can stick it onto my sink so that you don't have to be holding this it's just stuck there and then you can pull this out and you're then not getting any bacteria on anywhere she's the the lady that did it stuck it to the trolley that she had and so take that out that is the tube that they put up your waterworks they don't put it all in because when you see it you think blooming heck that's long it only goes in about that much not very much at all it depends obviously on the length of your urethra but it doesn't go in very much at all so don't panic thinking the whole of that thing goes in so any water comes out the end then this is the stuff they put in this is called sister stat um 50 ml i'll show you what the little bottle is like so it's like that um and then they draw it up with a syringe so this is a syringe so they you get a little box or they do it with a little box so you make this little box up pour the sister stat into that box and then they pull it up into this syringe and then that syringe just goes in the end of that just gets pushed onto the end of that and they put the liquid in it barely takes any time at all and when she did it the first time I was kind of like is that you done and she was like yeah and I was like oh my goodness like the only bit that was painful for me was the catheter going in i was like oh that was a bit sore but that was it and then i was like okay and so i totally was waiting to get up off the bed and thinking this is the bit where i'm going to be in agony and i wasn't at all it wasn't anything like any of the other any of the other tests i've had it wasn't like a cystoscopy it was not like the urodynamics nothing like it at all i don't know whether the cystoscopy i think is a is a bigger tube than that um and they're doing a lot of poking around and i think the urodynamics is a smaller tube than that catheter it's a smaller catheter and so i don't know whether it's because this just goes in and out once um or, or what it was but actually when you feel the fluid going in it, it's it's feels kind of warm it's not warm <laughs> but it feels kind of felt kind of warm to me and it actually felt a little bit soothing i was like oh that kind of soothed the pain of the catheter going in whoever thought i'd be sitting on camera talking about catheters <laughs> Um, so yeah I was amazed I walked out into the waiting room and my husband was like you ready to go and I was like yep come on let's go I walked out and I was like I'm fine I'm absolutely fine I could have driven it's absolutely no problem you don't need to take any more time off I'll just drive down here myself now when I started off um talking to the ladies about this whole thing they said to me you can actually be taught how to do it at home um and as I said, my mum actually sent me some of these catheters because I can't remember if I discussed this with you, but one of the problems I have, as I've just mentioned there, is I can never fully empty my bladder. My mum says it's because I'm too impatient. And actually, the nurse I've since seen, who is the regular installations nurse, did say that it, it is part of the problem, is you've got to sit on the toilet for long enough and relax and not try and rush it because we were laughing I was saying who's got time to go for a wee it's so boring you know I've got so many things to do I haven't got time <laughs> especially the amount I go but she said you've got to sit there for longer and, and relax and you know you might then be able to empty it but the dog walks is something that if I had an objective you know and a, and a way of testing if this is working it's that I would be able to go for a walk for an hour with Watson go for a wee before I leave the house and and not be in pain and not need you know constantly be like right we're gonna have to go now because i'm gonna need to find somewhere to go to the bathroom so the guy that i saw that i think i told you guys was really arrogant before having any of the urodynamics or anything i was seeing this consultant i've not seen him since i said to him i go to the loop but there's still stuff left in there and he was like um right let's see and he sent me off for one of these scans like a bladder scan and I have definitely told you this. Every time I have this scan, it tells me there's nothing in there. And then I go and prove them wrong. And there is. And now they've seen that a couple of times. And they're like, yes, there is still some left in there. 
it's normally only a small amount but so I'm definitely not able to completely empty my bladder but nobody seems to be acknowledging that because I think the Eurodynamic study I did manage to empty it and so that's what's on record even though the nurses like with the installations have seen it and you know anyway I thought to myself it might be worth using a catheter if I could use that before I left the house and empty my bladder then let's see if that works you know maybe that will be the difference between me being able to go for a, a long amount of time without going again because what that arrogant guy told me was that he said no because we went back in and he said the scan is zero I said to him I'm telling you I could go for a wee now and there'll be something in there but he wouldn't believe me and he was saying it's the signals this is your problem but then bearing in mind he thought I had overactive bladder syndrome at the time but he said the signals are not working properly and so you think you need to go to the bathroom and you don't I mean that didn't make sense because I said to him every time I go to the bathroom I go for a wee it's not like when you've got full-on cystitis where you go and there's like a few drops and it's agony it's not like that at all I always wee when I go to the bathroom so I thought why not try catheters and see how that helps so my mum sent me them and I was really nervous about trying them but I did I tried them a couple of times and and they worked and it extended the time I was out a little bit but it wasn't the cure, if you know what I mean. It would definitely made the difference. I used it once when I was going for a walk with friends and we were going somewhere where there was no toilets. And so it did. I did manage that whole walk, but then Watson and I were going places afterwards and I did end up in pain. By the time I got home, I was like, I'm in pain now, even though I had used that before I left the house. So it isn't the cure, but it is definitely helpful. Um, so anyway, I was talking about the fact that they can teach you how to use them at home. So in my second week, I saw Rachel, who is the installations girl, and she's lovely. And I said to her, you know, is it possible to, to do it at home myself? And she said, yeah, no problem. I just need to order you the stuff. So you'll need to come back next week, which was the third time. Oh, actually, I've had four. So I went back on the third time. She had all the stuff and she asked me. I didn't have to put the catheter in because I said to her, I'm probably not going to be able to do it with somebody watching me. I said, I'll just get stage fright, you know. Um, but she said, if you can attach this with the liquid in to the catheter and depress it and put the stuff in then that's fine so that's what I did and then she gave me all this stuff so then last Fridays I did myself um it was a bit of a faff you know you kind of close the bathroom door and get yourself all set up and like right I've got this I've got that and you know it took a few goes um she gives you plenty of catheters so that there's no bacteria problems um but I, I managed to do it myself and and it was pretty easy. It was definitely easier than having to drive all the way to the hospital and sit and wait around. And then, you know, yeah, much better, much better doing it at home. So I've got, how many have I got? One, two, three, four. I've got four more to do. So that would be a total of eight. But I have to phone Rachel after six. So I'll do another two. So in another two weeks, I have to phone her and tell her if I found it to be um, helping or not so I would say do it at home if you can at all and if you think you can't do it honestly you can you know it's like I thought I wasn't ever going to be able to put contacts in but I've managed to do that contact lenses I thought I was never going to be able to drive but I could do that you you honestly can do it if I can do it anybody can because I'm really really clumsy and like I said if it takes a few goes it doesn't really matter um, so that's what I'm doing I've got another two like I said and then I'll phone to say if I think it's helping after the first two that I had which were at the hospital I knew absolutely that they weren't working because the day before I'd gone for so I had one and then the following week the day before I went for my second treatment I had gone to the hospital to have the MRI for my knees and I had made sure I went for a wee before I left here and it was I think about a 45 minute drive to get to the hospital by the time I got to the hospital I was in agony and needed to find the bathroom so I knew that first one hadn't done anything but you know you probably wouldn't expect it to the second week was kind of the same or the third when I went for the third one I'd had a situation the same the day before where I'd left the house to go shopping and needed to find a bathroom because I was in pain. I didn't notice anything between three and four. Then the fourth one was the one I did at home. And the following day, I went out shopping. And I had a physio appointment. I had, what else was there? No, I had a physio appointment, that's right. So I knew I was leaving at 11 o'clock. I went to the loo as normal, as I always do before I leave. I probably go two or three times before I, I'm leaving just to try and make sure, I've, you know, I've got as, as good a, a chance as any to, to not be in pain. 
left at 11, went to my physio appointment. I went from my physio to the gym um, and did half an hour at the gym. I went from there to the shops to do some shopping. And I got in at half past three and it wasn't until half past two that I needed I felt the need to go to, for a wee. So that firstly was three and a half hours. So 11, 12, one, two. Well, oh, that's more than that. 11, 12, one, two. Yeah, three and a half hours. That's amazing. That's really amazing that three and a half hours I could go without any pain at all and without even needing a wee. And I'd had the same amount to drink. You know, I'd had my two cups of tea in the morning and then my shake. Um, and then what happened, which is more of a, a kind of signifier that this is working, is when I needed a wee at 2.30, it was the kind of needing a wee that I remember from years and years ago, in that it's like, I need to go to the bathroom, I'll wait until I get home. It wasn't agony, it wasn't painful, it was just, I need to go for a wee. And so I did a few other things. Like I said, it was an hour before I actually then got home. And even when I got home, I was like, right, let me just put the shopping away because I had stuff that needed to go into the fridge. Let me just put the shopping away and then I'll go to the bathroom. So that's after four. Um, and so I feel like, I feel hopeful from that. I feel like that might mean that it's working. Sorry about me moving about so much, but my knees are hurting. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I'm hopeful. The reason I'm not like, oh, that is definitely it is because I do go that long sometimes when I meet my friend on a Saturday. When I meet her for lunch, I go up town, my, and my husband drops me up there. And normally the time I get to town, I need to go for a wee again, even though I went before I left. And that's only like half an hour. So I normally head straight to Debenham's toilets. I know where all the toilets are. Um, and then after that, so that will probably be 11 o'clock. Well, I suppose I do go maybe an hour or two later but it's not quite as bad but I know that that's because I don't drink as much and so I do end up with a bit of cystitis pain when I meet her but there is there has been times I've gone that amount of time without going to the bathroom without being in pain um but I've I haven't for 13 years I would say 13 14 years had that feeling that I had when I was out shopping whereby I need to go to the bathroom but I'll wait till I get home and it's not painful. It's just, don't get me wrong. I know when you've got a full bladder and you need to go to the bathroom, that's, it can get painful. It's very, very uncomfortable, but it's nothing like the feeling of, of what I normally get, which is to have an acid in my bladder, even if it's not full. So that was the, the kind of sign for me that this may well be working. I know this is a massively long video, but I feel like for me, it was a huge decision to go ahead with these. And I just didn't know because I was like, well, if I don't try them, I'll never know. But I don't want to give myself an infection. You know, I've had no infections, by the way, but I haven't had a UTI for years. That's not something that I suffer with, which is a usual symptom of, of having this. Thankfully, I don't have it anymore. I had it at the beginning. Um, so from my point of view, if you were my friend, asking me if you should go for it, I would say yes, because it's nowhere near as painful as any of the other procedures that I've had. It seems like it may be working. It's very, very quick. It's not a long procedure. And I would say it's worthwhile trying. Um, and if you can do it at home. So I hope that that's been interesting to you. Um, by the way, the purpose of this I, is to rebuild your bladder wall. Apparently, like there's damage to my bladder wall from that, from this massive, um, bladder infection I had when I was in Spain, which was just, I was just peeing pure blood basically, and that's damaged the lining and this is to repair it. So it's understandable that it's not gonna happen in the first couple of weeks. You know, if I am seeing a benefit now, that's great. Um, and what happens after six weeks, you do it once a week for six weeks, then once a fortnight for, I don't know how long that lasts, maybe another six times. And then it's a maintenance dose of once a month. Um, so I will come back and report to you after, you know, if I see any more improvements or if I get to the six week stage and I'm like, no, it's definitely not working. I'll definitely come and tell you guys, but I knew that this would be definitely helpful to some people. So I would love to hear your experiences um, with bladder installations, with interstitial cystitis, what you found to have worked um, because I know that it's a miserable thing to have, you know, I'm so lucky that I can leave the house now and that I have, you know, different things that, that help me. Amitriptyline has helped me. The little spray that I have helps me. Um, bicarbonate of soda helps me. Drinking a lot helps me. You know, I've got all these tools that I, that I manage it with, but at the very beginning years ago, it was just, it was hideous. I couldn't even leave the house and I was just, I could barely leave the bathroom, you know? Um, so I, I totally understand what you're going through. So, like I said, I hope this was useful to you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you again soon.